Hello, everyone. Everyone. The <clears throat> I don't know whether to say the mark or the task or the proof of this invitation to inquiry, maybe all of those and more, is the willingness to face the catastrophe that's inevitable in this experience of living on this planet in a body, whatever kind of body. Whether it's a collective planetary disaster, whether it's naturally caused or so-called unnaturally caused, or whether it's personal, the invitation from my teacher and from his teacher, from me to you and you back to me, is to be able to simply without pushing away and without indulging in dramatic story, face what's here, meet what's here, experience what's here. And sometimes it is not pleasant and sometimes it is exquisitely blissful. Sometimes we're just as afraid of the bliss as we are of the horror. And we tell all kinds of stories to actually escape the bliss. But in general, the horror of life as it is experienced in a body, in a planet, is avoided. It's avoided by some hope that it's not really happening, or some hope that it would never happen to you, or some hope that it's really all for the good or some hope that it's perfect, or some hope that the personality survives after death. That's a big one, isn't it? <laughs> oh, please let it be true. Let there be a heaven. Let there be another lifetime. Let there be me continuing. But the radicalness of giving up all hope is really the radicalness of giving up all stories. Not that there's anything wrong with stories, they are completely appropriate when they are appropriate. In inquiring into the reality of what's true, true being what's always true, not just relatively true in this moment, but always true then hope of change, of survival, of betterment, of escape, of happiness, of enlightenment, all hope must be put aside. Because hope itself is some projection of a me into a future in order to avoid the catastrophe that is sensed in the present, whether it's sensed through a newspaper or television or just the sensations in one's body. So as I've said <clears throat> for years, it is not for the faint of heart. It is not a, <clears throat> a mass teaching. It's not a cult teaching. Mass teachings and cult t teachings give you hope. It's for this willingness to stand alone where you are and face what you are most afraid of facing, the annihilation of you without any hope of survival. We see from this, the latest natural catastrophe, how quickly it can happen. 
No warning. Everything going great. And it can happen like that. Seconds. So to recognize that, to use this world story to, to recognize the opportunity of facing it now as if it were happening right now. The end of your life as you know it. The end of you as you think yourself. The end of all that you have accumulated or gained or lost. The end of it, period. Without any hope of it not really being the end, just on to something else. Then, this uh, lion courage of the heart to investigate itself naturally awakens. If you are in this room, and certainly if you are in this room for the second time, or in a meeting like this for the second time, you have that courage. There's simply the invitation to meet what is here. When all hope of escaping here with its catastrophic experiences is given up. And it is radically good news, just not what we think it is. We think the good news is, is that we personally survive, just in different form. We hope that's what it is, because even though we may not like our forms, we are in love with ourselves. Let's face it. It's not a bad thing. We just think we are in love with the form. What we are in love with is the truth of oneself, the very beingness. is irresistible to itself. But we become uh, mistaken in thinking that beingness is this flesh or this, these emotions or these intellects, these collections of experiences. And that mistake, that veiling, is tragic. And it's the initial and final mistake to remaining asleep to the truth of who one is, who you are, which needs no hope, which is not separate from the flesh or the emotions or the experiences or the intellect, and yet is present when all of that is finished. So if you hear this and you take this as a catechism, as a hope, you'll miss the point. Or if you take it as some kind of nihilistic, existential hopelessness, you miss the point. The point is closer than either of those polarities. And it is really what inquiry is about. The result of inquiry can't be spoken, but we speak toward it when we have discovered it. We have to, as human animals, as social animals, we have to go to one another and say, whoa, let me invite you here. Try this. Stop. Be still. No, no, don't do anything. <laughs> Give up hope. <laughs> Give up hopelessness. And invariably the question is, what will I experience? What's there? What's on the other side? Is it good? Will I like it? Will I be happy? Forget that. Just stop. 
give up hope, meet yourself. And that's, that's what our meetings are about, <laughs> those conversations. <laughs>